became an intelligence officer with the, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, Canada's domestic spy service. I served there for about 10 years, a little under 10 years, and then left a, a few years back. How do you individually manage those tensions and the resentment that can brew, which to your point earlier around vulnerability to being blackmailed or whatever, like yeah. these are probably other moments where things like that can come up. And so how does that stuff get managed in the team? Are there, I think you did mention sort of like the powwows that go on afterwards to help air out the grievances, but yeah, can you yes. maybe talk a little bit about that story? Well, the other the other reason you're kind of drawn to the kind of the fake life I, I call it is because you're you're so close to these people, like you go through so much stuff with them that no one else will ever understand. Right? These tense moments, these you, you're going to forge these friendships and this trust is forged in these incredibly tense tense times where you're in someone's driveway, the person's in the front door, you're responsible for everybody's safety, and everyone's looking at you to make a decision: Do we run away? Do we stay? Do we hold tight? You know, in that situation going back and I'll talk with this other one. So we're, we're crouching this guy's between these two cars and the person's in the, and the light goes on in the, in the front yard. And the moment and, and it is, if we run, he will see us running, right? And then something's going on and we live to fight another day, but but we've, we've blown the operation. Can we stay where we are? Can we all huddle? And if he takes two steps out, someone intercepts him, somebody goes this way and they all look to the leader to say, you tell us if we're running or not. And no one makes independent decisions. It is a top down. And when you get a role, you do your role. So I had this, my partner at the time, my, my number two in this job was like, she's like five foot one, five foot two. And her job in that was to, to like hold the guy up so the rest of us could escape. And I'm like, am I really going to ask her to do that? And, and 100%. In that situation, we held tight, light went off. And we're like, then we scurried away and, and got the job done. But there's like, you, you, we, just, we just froze. And you're like, we're going to ride this thing out. This is our cover. We're here riding it out. So to go back to, to the other story, we're, we're going to do a job in a car, another car. And we happen to be in Windsor and the car wasn't where we thought it was going to be. Now we have a lot of people. We've gone to Windsor. There's overtime. It's, you know, the getting everyone down there, getting a plan approved. And there is, once you're in the field, there is leeway given to the people people on the ground to make decisions. There's some wiggle room if the car is not exactly where you thought it would be when you wrote up your operational plan, right? Because it's not always perfect. As a sidebar, if I ever see a movie where a plan goes perfectly, I say it's totally unrealistic. You know, no plan goes A to B to C to D. So the car wasn't where we thought it was going to be, but we're all down there over times accruing and I'm in charge of this operation and I have a boss who's a micromanager and I have the power to say, we're doing it, new way, new plan, new whatever. But I have a boss who if I said, hey, by the way, we didn't do it the way it was drawn up. She's like, well, why didn't you tell me, you know, what the heck? She's in Toronto. So I have to like manage up and my boss because I like to keep my job and I don't want her to be embarrassed. And if something goes wrong, I feel like she should know and kind of manage that, what my roles and responsibilities are, what hers are. And, and then I have a team that's like, let's go do this. We can definitely do it. Like rah, rah, rah. Like don't, you don't have to tell your boss. Like we, like we can just go, like don't ask permission, ask for forgiveness. And you know, I'm a pleaser we've established. I want everyone to like me and I don't want my boss to be mad and I don't want her to be, you know, that is, that is inherent. That is all me. I own that. Other people would have different reactions to that. So we get stuck in this situation where my, and my boss, who's a micromanager and in the, in the nicest way, like wants to be helpful. And she says, take some pictures, send me a drawing, write a new proposal. Like we're, we're doing stick figures on the ground in a parking lot. You know, it's it, the car is the bottle cap. The team is the stick. It's not, it's not a feasible ask from her perspective. So you're kind of managing. Uh, and, and, and it was a, that was tense and tough, right? And people, as much as my team appreciate, or I would say appreciate it, would acknowledge that I had a challenging boss in a situation that I had to navigate. They wanted me because they were gung hoers and they wanted me to say, let's go. And so we eventually, it actually came down to how I kind of, my boss, I, I said, you know, can we, can we go? And that put the ball in her court, you know, long story short, and that didn't work. And she had, and I said, look, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this. I have the authority to do this. I'm just advising you that it is happening. FYI. And to her credit, she said, okay. So it, it worked out, you know, she got, 
she got approval. She said, look, let me just, let me just get you approval quickly. And I said, okay, we, and we went and did it. But then you asked her the team, like these should be rah, rah, we did it. And there was this lingering kind of, why'd you do that? Why we do it that way? And you have to, you have a beer and you, you, you just say, Hey, you know, sorry, I don't know addiction people. I'm saying we have a, whatever that deep, oh, that kind yeah, of decompression, yeah. Yeah, yeah. whatever that, that we were, we were in, in Windsor too. It worked out well, you go sit around the blackjack table and you're like, once again, actually another, ugh, I've really stepped in it. If you have addiction, no, no, uh, folks. no, part of the, part of the, <laughs> but it was well being is not- yes not mattering right about the yeah so we yeah. For the, the point was just yeah. you know we had to decompress after every operation you have to decompress and then also air air it out because you can't have that affect the next job because yeah. the trust you require of your team is just total and complete i am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day peace out